Ok. Can we start? Ok, can we start? Number two, huh? Can we start? Okay. Can we start number four, four time? All right, we are starting. <laughs> okay, we were talking about uh, routing protocols the other day, right? And as you mentioned earlier, routing protocols are basically procedures or uh, rules used by the, route, by the routers to find out about the topology, the connections between one router and another router, how to send packets from, from source to destination. Right, that's the idea. The routers must speak some kind of language. That's the protocol. And the routers have to communicate with other routers because remember earlier when you say looking at the, at the routing table, there's always a default route. Right, so the, the routers must know, for example, like here, you must know what are the local addresses. That's okay. But if, if the addresses does not match this, where do you send your packet to? So the router, each router must know the default one or the next one. Right, so if you go to the previous example, you say, okay, from R1 you need to send to R2. R2 say whether to send to R1 or to, or to go out on the internet. Right? So each router must know the existence of the next router. Right? So the thing is that the, net, the network internet becomes very, very large. There's no way one router can keep, keep track of all the uh, hosts on the internet. And there's no way you can know which way to go. So what it does is that each router is responsible for one local area, which we call AS earlier, autonomous system, right? So hosts and routers will be, will be grouped together under one local zone, which we call as autonomous system, and then the routers will try to find out of all the routers, uh, the, the, the routes between, within its own area, right? Within its own area. And to, to find out the hosts of, or the paths to go from one host to another host, they use some kind of protocol, right? So there'll be one routing protocol to be used within here and one protocol to be used between the, the AS, right? That's where we're coming next. So this is what I mentioned earlier. So these are the pro routing protocols which we're going to look at, the common ones. Right? So we, protocols are two types, intra-domain or inter-domain. Intra means they are within an AS, right? within an autonomous system, within a zone. So the routers will use this particular protocol to exchange information about the tables, routing tables. Right, so then we have two types of algorithms, distance vector and link state, and each of these is connected to one routing protocol, the RIP and the OSPF. So RIP is implemented as distance vector algorithm. OSPF is a protocol implemented using link state routing protocol. Right? Then between the AS, the interdomain protocol is basically the BGP, which uses path factor, another, another algorithm. Right? So as I mentioned earlier, intra-domain is within here, inter-domain is between the AS. Right? So in this class, you can talk one language, you can talk whatever you want. That's here. That's intra-domain. But if you talk with this class with another class, then you have, between the classes, there will be a different protocol. Right? So that's the idea. So now we're going to, we're going to talk like these are the, the three common ones. There are actually many of them. Uh, there's also EIGR, e EIGRP, and so on. Anyway, we're only take, taking the, the three common and uh, uh, which are commonly used protocols in the routers, right? So first one, this distance vector. Right. So first of all, before we go into that, you must understand that. How the, routing, how the routers exchange information is by sharing. Since no single router can know the paths to all the, all the hosts, they have to share. So I know some of it, you know some of it, let's share information. 
I just say, okay, for, to study for the exam, you study two chapters, you study three, three chapters, different chapters, of course. Then you share information. Hopefully, by the end, everybody knows everything. Hopefully. But don't, distract, don't, don't try this for the exam, okay? No guarantees you get, it will be good for you. But anyway, the idea is that you divide and conquer. Right? That's the idea. So you share. Uh, you, each router will try to gather information about its, its, within its zone, and then share that. Then it builds a routing table, and then share the routing table with other, other routers in the neighbors. And say, OK, I have this. What do you have? Let's exchange. Right? Then we share, and then we can know what you have and what I have. And I know packets coming to this destination. I don't have to find out on my own. I depend on the, the other router, what, it, what we have shared earlier. Right? So it, it builds the, the routing decisions better. So, the, so that's, that's the principle. So distance vector routing, what it tries to do is try to find the least cost route between any two nodes. Right? Don't, don't get confused by this table, uh, this diagram is actually very simple. All right? Let me take a look at this first of all. So if this, is the, this is a diagram. Right? This is a, a one, one network with this topology. A, B, C, D are all the routers. And the routers are connected by these links, and that each link has some kind of a measurement or metric. Right? You can measure the distance, or you can measure hops, or you can measure bandwidth, or whatever it is. Right? Because we're going to use this measurement to, to decide which is a better route. Right? Just as I say, if we're going from, 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 from USM to Butterfringi, right? you can take many, many ways to go. Right? You go to Georgetown first, or you go to Jala Masjinagri first, or you go to Baila Pass, Bali Pulau. Right? There are many ways. So you must have some kind of measurement, either distance or speed or whatever it is. So this one, in this case, we use this measurement, these numbers. What these numbers? Later on, right? it doesn't matter. So these are tables. So for A, it knows that from A to go to B, B, C, D, it don't have to go to anyone. It can go directly. And the cost is, from A to A is zero because it's, it is itself. To go to A to B is 5, right? It's the, it's the cost of the link. And then to C is 2, to D is 3. But to go to E, there's no direct route, right? It has to go through another, another router, which is C. And the total distance or total cost to reach E is basically 6. So that means from A to C plus C to E, right? That's a total amount, a total uh, cost required to reach from A to C. So whenever packets, whenever, whenever router A sees pa packets, the destination address is E, it will look through this table and say, ah, E, OK, I know E must pass to C. Let C handle it. Right? Then C, C's table will say, OK, E is actually local. I know how to go to C. Same thing for D. Yeah? D, the only one directly connected is A. Right, which is three. The rest to go to B, C, and D, they all must go through A. Right? And the cost is accumulative. To go to say to go to E from D, he has to go through A first, right? And the total cost is nine. So that this is this is one with the minimum cost. We are looking at minimum distance. So from here to go to E, we can go through here. 3 plus 2 plus 4, that's 9. Or we can go to 3, 2, 4, 3. That's more already. Right? So the idea is to, there are many, many paths to go from A to, uh, from D to E, but we take the, the one with the minimum cost. Right? Because we want to find the shortest route. So this is the table. These are distance vector tables. Right? Routing tables based on distance vector. So this, that means these tables are already stabilized. After they have exchanged information with one another, this is the final product. But how do they actually, are, how they actually are built? Right? So that's the next one, next stage. So initially, initially the tables will be look like this. Each table, routing, each routing table for a particular router will only contain entries which is directly connected to that particular router. So A is connected to B, C, and D. So he knows that from, from A to go to B, C and D is 5, 2, and 3. To go to E, 
I do not know how to go to E because I'm not connected directly to, to A. A does not connect directly to E, so I do not know how to go there. So I temporarily I put S infinity. Right? Same thing for D. The only way to, D only knows how to go from A uh, from D to A. Right? So he has the cost. And the rest, B, C, D, other nodes, I do not know how to go yet. Right? So I put infinity first. So, this, so the first step of initialization of routing tables is that you find out what is the cost to the nearest neighbor, put in the table. Those are not in the not the nearest, you put them as an infinity first. Right? That's the first step. Now what happens is that after this initialization, now each node has each router has already have some kind of a temporary or rather uh, not temporary or not finalized routing table. Right? So what you're going to do is that each router, each router is going to start exchanging their incomplete routing table to the neighbors. Right? So A will send this table to D, to B, and also to C, wherever you are connected directly. D also will send its whatever he has, send to A. And then uh, C will send to A, B, and C. Everybody will send to his neighbors. Right? So you'll be getting now, each router will be getting incomplete routing tables from its neighbors. Right? Then we start comparing. Right? So example here given is that for table A. Right? Uh, for router A, the initial routing table is like 0, 5, 2, 3, infinity. Right? So this is the one, the old table. Now A has received update from C. Right? So example is taken from, only one example is taken. C's in semi-complete routing table is sent to A. So this thing goes to A. Right? And A knows that the distance between A and C is basically 2. So it receives the, this is the, the uh, semi-complete routing table received from C. And then what A does is that it will add on to it because the distance between A and C is 2. So whatever costs reported by C must be added on by 2, right? Because C is 2, two distance away. So you add up 2. 2 plus 2, 4, add up, add up, add up. All right? Now compare this modified table with the original table and see which is less. Right? So to go from a to C, either I, I, there's, a, there's a metric of 4, or the old one says 0 because yourself. OK, fine. So keep it. New table is 0. B, if I go direct from A to go to, to B is uh, from A, if I want to go to B is 5 because it's direct. But if I go through C, then it becomes 6. So which is lower? 5. So I pick the 5. So I compare each line by line, and I take the minimum. Right? One is which is less. So in this case, earlier, A does not know how to go to D. Uh, sorry, uh, A A does not know how to go to E, but C says, uh, sorry, uh, C says that he knows how to go to to E, and the cost is six. Right? After plus the distance between A and C. So the less between the minimum between six and infinity is. Six. Right. So in other words, we take our the, the first routing table you build, the initial one, and then compare with the neighbor one. See which one gives you less distance, line by line, host by host, and then you build your own. So now A has found out how to go from A to C, E, and, you, and is making use of the information given by C. Right. By sharing the information with, with the neighbor. You can find a path to go to the the other hosts which are beyond uh, beyond beyond your, your direct uh, connection, right? So the others will also do the same thing: pass, 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 exchange, exchange, exchange. Then everyone will be get. This. So this is the final the final uh, the final version of the routing tables for each of the uh, routers after they have exchanged information. Right, so the main thing is that you must find, after it stabilizes, it will, it will, it will show the, 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 the least cost route between any two nodes on the particular network.
right? So the question is, when do you start sending the incomplete routing tables, right? Do you send it often, right? Periodic, after some time, one minute, two minutes. Every two minutes, I send you update. Every two minutes, I send you update, right? Exchange the tables. Or I only update when there's a change, meaning that when my, my routing, my, my immediate neighbors change, then, when I, then my routing table will change and I inform you. Otherwise, if I send every 30 seconds, I give you the same version, no point also, right? So, so there's a choice. So if it's triggered update, then you only change, you only need, need update when there's a change in the routing table, meaning that after it receives, uh, after it receives updates from neighbors, or some failures detected in, in neighboring links, unreachable nodes, and all that. Right? Suddenly, you know that your neighbor cannot be reached. If your neighbor cannot be reached, then the cost will become infinity. Right? So then the tables changes. So then you might want to report to the others. Right? So basically, how, the, how this distance vector routing works is basically like, like neighbors here, right? standing over a fence and then gossiping. Right? You, tell, you tell me something, I tell you something. Let's share information about our, other people. Right? I do not know what the other people are saying. Okay, maybe I can hear from your, your side of the story. I know a little bit about other, other people, what they're doing. Good or bad is a different matter. Right? So the same thing, the, the routers does the same way. Now, however, so this procedure is quite simple. But the problem is there is a discrepancy in it. There is a problem in it. So what one way, one way to look at this is, is, is this, this version. Let's say we have, we have two routers connected to one another router, right? So three of them, X. And it says that we only show, only, we only show the partial table. Say, say from A to go to X is two, right? And it's, X is connected directly to A. From B to go to X, you have to go through A, and the distance is six, right? So two plus four, right? Now let's say there's a failure between there's a failure on a link between X and A. So once there's a failure, A will know immediately, right? So A will update its table and it becomes uh, it becomes infinity, unreachable. Now, since the table has changed, it will immediately inform its neighbor, right? So A will say, oh, okay, okay, we'll quickly inform B, B, B. I have found out that I cannot reach A anymore. Uh, I cannot reach X anymore, right? X is unreachable, okay? So you inform this, if inform B. Right, so what happens is that, not only this, uh, A will inform B, B also will inform, remember they keep exchanging after some time, keep exchanging information. So A informs X, uh, A informs B, B informs X when, when a receives update from B, it might think that somehow B says that it can reach X and the distance is 6. So A might think that maybe B has found another way to reach A, right? Some, some other way. A does not have direct connection, so B says he knows how to reach to A and the distance is 6. And since the, dis since the separation between A and B is 4, Therefore, to reach x, it must be 6 plus 4. So it updates, and we go through b. All right, so when a receives update from b, it updates its table because it, it thinks that b has found a way, b knows a way how to go to a. Right? Then, after that, the table is updated. Then next, next exchange, a sends a message saying the, the, the update to b. b will say, Hey, earlier, uh, now, now A is saying that to reach uh, X is 10, and the distance between A and B is 4, and I'm relying on A, therefore, if X says distance is 10, I mean, if B, A says the distance is 10, therefore, I have to update my table because my table is something wrong. Because X says, uh, A says it's 10 now. Something must have gone wrong or whatever it is. The, 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 the value has changed. So therefore, B also updates value to 10 plus 4, it becomes 14. Right? And then it continues. So you update me, I update you. Right? Basically blind leading the blind. Right? Both of them. Except there's, there's no, no connection. 
just because you're passing information, sharing information between one another, right, the, the table becomes updated. And it continues, continues, continues until eventually what happens? Both becomes infinities. Right? So this is not good. Right? Just like you say, when two, two neighbors talking about somebody, you keep, although there's, not, there's no basis to it, you keep adding false news, right? add and add and add and add, 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 the gossip becomes higher and higher and bigger and bigger, right? until it becomes too much. Right? So one way to solve this is that we define a limit to it. So infinity, we define as a maximum value of 16. So the meaning that after it updates many times, if it reaches 16, it's not going to update anymore already. Right? So that saves a lot of traffic because each time you exchange the table between each other, between one another, then it will actually, the, the, the packets are being transmitted on the network. It also adds to the traffic itself. Right? So this is one solution. Second solution is that a better solution where if you update me with some data telling me how to go to this particular host, I should have been telling you the same thing because if I got the information from you. Right? So in this case, when, 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 when uh, X report, when A reports update to B, B will say, I only got it from you last time. Right? Now you're telling me it changed, I don't believe it. Like I was the one who tell you the last time. Right? So, so only part of the table is exchanged and say B optimum root is not ad advertised to A because the information came from A itself. Right? So in other words, A, B will not send its incomplete table back to A because it is relying on path to A. Right? So you see, I know I, to go through this particular node, I go through you. I don't have to tell you, I don't have to tell you the same thing again because I'm getting this information from you itself. Right? So that is basically reduces the problem. Right? So this is called a two node instability two node loop in the because it involves two nodes. Another example involves three nodes, right? So three or more nodes, it can also affect the same way. So similar example, same thing. Here there are three nodes, right? And then again, the link between X and A fails. Now A, A sends updates to B and C, the, the, the direct connections. Somehow the update from A to C get lost. So C is not updated. Right? B gets updated. Okay? B gets updated. B updated, it becomes now 8. Right? Where are we? So 6, uh, 2 plus uh, earlier was 6, right? And then this gets updated. So uh, B will, B is directly, guess, because A says now cannot reach the, cannot reach A. And then it will, it will send to B, B updates this table, fine. But C did not receive anything because the packet got lost along the here. So now, when C updates B, B will think that, hey, hold on. Somehow, C knows how to get to A, right? And for B, I don't know how to get to A, so therefore I might follow the way, I might follow the, the C's way. So it updates and says, okay, I know how to get stable, how to go to, go to, to, to x by c, and since c says to reach x is 5, and the distance between c and b is 3, therefore my distance should be 8. Right? And then the b updates a again. a thinking, I do not know how to get x, but since b says I know how to get to x using c, oh, okay, therefore, and distance between a and b is 4, okay, 4 plus 8, 12. Right? So by relying on his neighbor, they update the table. Again, wrongly. Right? Because just relying on, on, the, on the information given by the neighbor itself. Right? So again, it does not solve the problem. Right? So two nodes, three nodes, and all these things. So in distance vector routing, this is one, big, one major problem. Right? So the only way to solve is that either we use fixing the limit for the infinity, or we use a split horizon, right? We do not send back the, 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 the partial table back to the same uh, router which actually we obtained information earlier from. Right? So, distance factor is the algorithm. 
right? How to do it? RIP is the implementation of it, the protocol, right? So what is RIP? It's basically routing information protocol. It's intra-domain, used inside an AS only, right? It's based on distance vector routing algorithm, and the metrics used is basically hop count, right? So if you use RIP, then all these numbers are basically means that how many hops away it is, right? That's the measurement you use. And it defines the limit of the infinity of 16. So any router should not be more than 16 steps away, right? If you use RIP within an AS, within a, within a local zone, right? So one local zone must not have more than 16 uh, routers to go to reach from one host to the next, to the to the last host, right? So to go all this. Is, by the way, did, by the way, did, 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 this graphic does not nothing to do with this. I'm just hoping that by now you you, you are not like this anymore. Right? Some of you are resleeping, so. Okay. So this is an actual example, right? So same thing. We have this this diagram and the, and the routers. Each router's table is has been stabilized. Routing table for each router, and what we do is that you say, for, let's say take for this, R2 to go to this destination 130, 130.10.0.0, where is it? Um, which is here, right? Uh, here, the red ones. So this is in the same hop, one hop is within the same zone, right? To go to 130, 130.11.0.0, which is here, so then it is basically two hops away. Right from here to one, and then two. And once you go two hops away, then you must tell which router you should go to, which interface. So from here to go to this, you must go the next uh, interface for the, for the next router is 131.10.0.2. That's basically R1, right? So it's R1's address, right? So you got this address. You go to next hop is R R2, R1. Sorry. And 195.2.60 is basically again two hops away, and this is the router's uh, IP. 205.550 over here, then it's three hops away, so one, two, and then three, right? 60, the same thing, one, two, and three, right? So they all go through the, the same, the same uh, R2, uh, sorry, same R1, right? This one. Okay, so in this case, we just keep the hop count, right? So the, so the rest you can follow. Okay, so that's routing table. That, that's distance vector and RRP. Right? So distance vector basically, they build the routing table based on the neighbor's information. So the problem is that neighbor's information you cannot, cannot be it's not foolproof. You cannot rely completely. The neighbor tells you lie, you wouldn't know. You just believe it, right? So link state tries to overcome that solution. So link state, what it does, that it'll try to find path or the distance to all the nodes by itself. Don't rely on neighbors. Right? The neighbors are not reliable. Or you cannot be trusted anyway, Most, uh, uh, all the time, right? You, if, the, if the neighbor makes a mistake, the mistake you will carry on. And you will pass this mistake to other people, right? So link state, what it does is try to find, try to build this routing table by itself. So how does it do that? Well, if you knew, if you if you build a routing table yourself, then you have to do, you have to do all the work. Meaning that it's going to send out test packets, right? Send out test packets to everyone, and then, and once you reach the destination, then there will be multiple packets coming back. And then I look at the, at, the, at, the, at the returns, the return packet, and compare which is the easiest, fastest way. Right? Just like I say, if you, I ask you, which is the fastest way from USM to, to, to Telobahan? Right? Okay. How to, how to test it? Either I rely on neighbors, somebody tell me that will be the distance vector. Or I say, okay, no, let's do experiment. I pick four or five of you. Okay. Now, each one take a different route. Take a different route to go there. Right? Once you reach there, quickly, the first one, quickly call me what time you reach there and tell me which road did you take. You report, you report back to me. 
I will get all the details, and then I compare, and then I decide which is the fastest route, and that will, I will put in my routing table. All right? So that's how it works. That's how a link state works. The only problem is that I have to send out all this, all this data. Right? For every node I want to find out, I have to send test, multiple test packets. So there's a lot of traffic going on in the, in the packet, in, in the network itself. Right? So this is what it's all about. Right? So it uses the extras algorithm to build the routing table. Right? So this is basically the example given. Right? So each, each node will have partial knowledge of the global topology initially. So he knows the connections, the type, condition, and the cost. So whole topology is compiled from partial knowledge of each node, all right? So to build a routing table, you need four actions, four steps. First, you need to create a packet, a link state packet, the test packet, right? So this link state packet will have the node's ID, the list of links, sequence number, age, and so on, right? So as the packet goes from one place to another place, hop to hop, wherever you pass by, that, that machine's IP number will be stored into there. Right? Checkpoints. Right? So the root will be actually be inside there. Right? So if the packet goes from, let's say from, to go to here, it goes this way, one, two, three. So you, as the packet goes from, you send this LSP, it goes to here, A's recorder will be, A will be IP, A's IP, IP address will be recorded, then C's IP address recorded, then E's IP recorded. And say, okay, now we reach the destination. Then the packet comes back and tell you, okay, to go from D to E, I found the root, it's basically A, C, E. Okay, I got one path. Another, another packet I sent, it went here, and the other one went this way. So the path will be D, A, B, C, D. All right? So when it comes back, it reports to you, okay, this is the path it takes, and how long did it take? Right? And another one might be this way, this way, this way, and so on. So there will be multiple, multiple paths coming back. So that's the, what the LSP will do, right? Put all this information. So then, once you create the LSP, then you flood the network, meaning you send the packet to all paths, because you want to find all possible ways, right? So in this case, if D wants to send, it will send, it will send multiple packets. You will send this way, and then you have to send, and make sure A sends it in multiple parts. And also D, so if you have three parts, it must, it must duplicate the, the packet and then send in all parts. This also must duplicate and send in all parts, and so on. Right? Because you want to find out what is the best route. To find the best route, we must find all routes first. You must go through all the routes. So in other words, it's going to take a long time to come back. Right, so that's the flooding of LSPs. Then, after that, once the packet has flooded and then it reaches its destination, we come back. Then we're going to compare. We use the Jaikras algorithm to find the shortest path three for each node. Right, and then finally we will construct the routing table based on the shortest path. Right, so that's the four steps. So that's the algorithm there to do it. Right, there's a step by step. And this is the, the, the person whose name is, who invented the algorithm. Right? So this is how it works, right? So we take, so uh, for, a, for, a, for a topology like this, we start with one node. Let's say we want to do for A. Right? We want to build a routing table for A. So what A has to do, it will create itself. It, so according to the algorithm, it will start Start one of the lists and then move the list from one. It will make a local node and tentative list and all these things. So that's what you're trying to do. Take the, make this as a root node and then find what are the immediately connected nodes. So it is D, C, and B, right? So this becomes a permanent list and this becomes the tentative list. And then we record the distances. Now we go one by one, okay? From C, what are the, are the possible connections from C? So from C to go to E, right? So there's a, there's a different way. So we could go this way, this way, this way, which is the shortest. This is the way, right? And then from B, so once that becomes, once it's fixed, uh, once, it's che once it's done, then we convert it from, from tentative to permanent. And then we move from, to D. Does D has any more nodes on its own? None, okay, finish. 
B is any number of nodes? Yes. E, which is already done last time. OK. So B. Then B also becomes done. Then E, any more nodes from E? None. OK. So in other words, it goes layer by layer, step by step. Right? Start from a node, see what are the immediate neighbors. Pick one of, one of the neighbors, and then see what are, the, what are the neighbors from that particular neighbor. Pick one of them, and then so on. Right? And then along the way, calculate. See which, is the, which can give you the shortest path. So at the end, you will get a table like this. Right? Again, table looks very, very simple or very, very, very normal by now. Right? So the node and the cost and the what's next router. Same thing. Right? So the protocol for which which implements which implements uh, link state routing is basically OSPF. Right? So OSPF is a protocol running on a router. So OSPF is also inter intra domain, works within an AS, based on link state routing, used inside an OS. Now what OSPF does is to divide AS into further groups. AS is one area, remember? One, one local zone. So for OSPF to work, it divides it into multiple areas within one. So this is one AS, one autonomous, autonomous zone, and then OSPF will divide it into further groups, smaller groups, which call them areas. So area 0, area 1, and so on. Right? So each area is basically a collection of hosts. Why you need to do that is to make the life simple. Because remember, by LSP means uh, li for, for, for link state routing, we have to flood the network with LSP packets. Right? So if I want to find out from you, all of you, say 200 of you all, I want to find out uh, which one of you is the youngest? Right? I ask you one by one. I have to ask every one of you. Right? That's link state. So in case of doing that, I ask you to form groups. OK, uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Why don't each one of you work and see who is the youngest in there? Right? And then compare the youngest from each group will compare among themselves. Now I got, I, got, I, got, I got the answer very fast. Because I don't have to do for all 200, I just have been divided. So same thing is doing for the OSPF. Right? So each one of them, so routers inside an area floods it with routing information. Then we, we require special routers. We call them border routers. So border routers basically summarizes. Huh? Summarizes all the information about the area and sends it to other areas. Right? So this will be border area. So in this case, this area, There'll be one of them, and they flood, they flood with the packet and find out what is the uh, shortest path and the packet. This also will do the same thing after that. They exchange that two uh, routing tables between the borders, and then you can get a complete version. Right? So it's much easier in that way. Faster, in other words. All right, so in OSPF, the metric used right, is a number. Right, this cost is, can be a few things. In the RIP, it's always hop, hop count. In OSPF, it can be uh, multiple. Right? So it can be a, a value assigned by, by, by each route by this administrator. It can be a minimum delay, maximum throughput. And a router can have multiple routing tables, each one based on different types of service. Right? For example, we can have a table like this. One is for bandwidth. Another one, same table, but the, with the values is for delay, for example. Right? So then we are going to use. If, then I can, make, you, I can use the two tables together and make a decision. Which one gives you me the least delay, which one gives you the maximum throughput, and so on. Right? In, in RIP, it's only, only, only one measurement, which is the hop, hops. Right? It's just one hop or two hops. I don't know how long a hop takes, but I know it's one or two hops. Right? That's all. But here, actually, we can fine-tune it better. Right? For example, like this, uh, if it's gigabit internet, we give a value of 1. Lower value is better in this case. Internet is 10. If it's a serial line, 56 kilobits per second, we give a very high value. Right? And the num numbers can be compared. 
So in OSPF, there are a few types of links, point to point, okay, let's take a look at this. Point to point links is basically between one router and another. Two routers are connected directly, that's point to point, right? Or multiple routers are connected together in a network. That's, that's a transient link, right? Just like the, uh, the, the, the bus backbone, right? So, or bus backbone, or mesh backbone, or star backbone, or star topology, whichever it is, all, all seems to call it transient link, right? Doesn't matter, that means there are multiple, multiple routers are connected together in a, in a, in a topology. So normally, if we have, even though they look like this, but actually, like realistically, they're implemented like this. There'll, there'll be one particular router which is in charge of all the other routers in that area, right? In a particular area, there'll be one router in charge. So that becomes the boss, the leader, right? So it will be the, something like this. No matter how they're connected, it doesn't matter. One of them has to become the designated router. Right, so this is the second one. The third one is that, well, there's only one router. If there's only one router, you're the boss anyway, so nobody can challenge you. Right, so it's one router, and so this is called stop link. Special case of transient, only one router involved. So this router is the destination router. And at the same way, we can also create virtual links. Right? So sometimes when an actual connection between two machines or two areas becomes disconnected, then we, we create a virtual link by software. Say, okay, uh, this router, we connect it virtually with this, with this router. How it goes through? It goes through here. All right, so physically, it's a long way off, but uh, we are connecting it by, on, on, the, on the administrator will say, okay, on this router, right, this router to connect, to go to, here, to this particular area, go to this, this router. How to go through? This is the link. So virtual links can be can be torn down, can be can be created on the, on uh, whenever required dynamically. So example OSPF again same thing, right? Similar thing. There are multiple routers and a connection, so there are uh, uh, measurements, um, there are cost factors involved. It doesn't matter, right? Now the third type, the path vector, right? Path vector routing is basically bit for between AS, right? Between one zone of routers and another zone of routers, right? How it works is similar to distance vector routing, right? So each AS, each AS will appoint one, one special node. We call it speaker node, right? So the speaker node will act on behalf of AS. It creates a routing tables. Advertising routing tables to other speakers in other neighboring AS, right? And only a speaker node can communicate with each, 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 each other. So each AS, remember each AS, uh, we, so basically path of vector routing is to communication, routing, how to change routing, routing information between one AS and another AS. Right? Just as I say, when you, between your neighbor and all that, you can talk. Right? You can talk to your neighbor on the left, on the neighbor on the right, or neighbor in the front and at the back. Right? Among your neighbors, you, com you communicate. That's okay. That's intra-domain, within the AS. But between your, your housing area and another housing area, you cannot be, all of you go to another housing area and, and start asking for news or info update. It's not possible. It's too, too complex. So you appoint a leader, right? A chief gossip gossiper, for example, okay. Appoint someone. Then this person collects information from this neighborhood and then go meet up on the, the leader from the other, the other neighborhood and then exchange information. So that's what the speaker node is. Right? Exchange information between the zones. Right? So the tables will look like this. Right? So initially, so these are the speaker nodes, A1, C1, B1, D1, and these are AS, this is one zone, one another zones. Right? So they will, they will do uh, uh, routing protocol. They can use RIP, OSPF within here to build their, to build their routing table. Right? Here also they can use RIP or OSPF. It doesn't matter. They are quite independent in that sense. Right? They employ their own routing protocol and then build the tables. Okay? Now what we're going to do is exchange information between one zone and another zone. Then we use the path vector. Right? 
So initially, the speaker node will have information about each, each own zone only. So you will say, uh, speaker node A1, the speaker node for AS1 has the information about the routers in its own zone, A1, A2, A3, A4, they are all in AS1, this, this particular autonomous system, right? And then uh, C1 only knows about contents from C1, C2, C3, okay, fine. Then they will start exchanging information. So A1 will send this table to C1, right? C1 will send this table to this one. And then, so they exchange among themselves, these tables. So then this is what we get. So now the A1 will know that, okay, he knows routers in his own area, A1 to A5, okay. The B1 to B4, B1 to B4 came from here, right? So this table is passed on to A1. A1 include this information there and say that destinations B1 to B4, uh, to reach there, we have to go from our zone, AS1, and then go to AS2. Because B1, B2, B3, B4 are in the in AS2. Alright? Same thing, C1 to go to, from, from, from A1 to go to any of the destination in C1, C2, C3, they have to go from the local zone, AS1, to AS3. And to D, any of the D nodes, then you have to go to 1, AS1, AS3, and AS4. Right? So you go from here. To go to D, you have to go through C and then D. Right? So we only keep the information of how to route between the zones, between the autonomous zones. That's what the this is path vector routing is supposed to do, between the zones. Right? So the protocol for this is BGP, right? border gateway protocol. So BGP is interdomain routing protocol between the AS, use path vector routing. So the BGP session is normally when the route, when, when the when the speaker nodes exchange routing information. So when A1 and AC exchange information, they use a BGP session, right? a, special, uh, a special protocol to do that. Right? So there are two types of sessions, EGP, eBGP, and iBGP. eBGP is external one, between two speaker nodes between different areas. So between, send, between here, between zones, they use eBGP. E Right, uh, eBGP, right between the zones, and then when after that update to update the members inside the zone, then they use the iBGP. Right. Okay. So basically, is that? I think that's the last one. Yes. Right. So the o RIP and OSPF is within the AS autonomous zone. BGP is between those autonomous zones. Right. All right, so we'll stop here then. <clears throat>